Hello, Sumit. This is a video uh, pertaining to the topic test that we have at Modi Prep for you. The idea of these tests is that you do the concepts, basic concepts of a topic, and then to make sure that you are able to apply this those concepts in a timed manner in an exam, you take this test. Once you've taken the test, there is a video with every test, which will give you the solutions to all the questions and also brief analysis of what you could have done. Uh, what could have been a good time to attempt a question and which questions could have been attempted. There are more than 200 such topic tests available on the Android app for Bodhi Prep. Uh, the link for the app is in the description of the video. Please download the app and make use of these tests. This video is on the topic factors of number system. And this is the discussion for the first test on this topic in the app. Now, a brief analysis uh, to start off. This test was a, uh, in terms of level of difficulty, moderate to difficult level of test. Six questions, five to six questions, net net correct out of 10 would probably give you a 95 percentile plus in this test. And the ideal time for attempting that is going from question one to 10 would be about 23 to 24 minutes in which we'll be able to get five to six easy questions correct and probably give an attempt on the other questions and see if we are able to increase our score for the uh, other questions. Looking at the questions. So question one says. Uh, for how many pairs of positive integers m and n satisfy 1 by m plus 4 by n is equal to 1 by 12. Now, this is a common application of factors. We cross, uh, we take the LCM m n, n plus 4 m is equal to 1 by 12. We cross multiply 12 n plus 48 m is equal to m n. Take m n on one side minus 48 m minus 12 n minus 48 m minus 12 n is equal to uh, 0. Now, if you want to write this in terms of m minus a into n minus b, so that we get a constant on the right hand side and we are able to break it down into a product of two numbers, we add and add the number, the product of these two coefficients that is 48 into 12 on the left hand side and 48 into 12 on the right hand side. This can be written as m minus 12 into n minus 48. And on the right hand side, we have 48 into 12. 48 into 12 can be factorized as uh, 16 into 3 into 4 into 3. 16 is 2 raised to power 4, 4 is 2 squared. So 2 raised to power 6 into 3 squared. Now, this number can be expressed in uh, as, as a product of uh, two numbers in a certain number of ways. One will be attributed to m minus 12, the other to n minus 48. Any value this takes, any positive value, we can see uh, both n and m will be positive because m minus 12 is equal to 1 will give us n is equal to 13. The constraint is n is an odd integer less than 60. n is an odd integer less than 60. So, n is less than... 60 n is odd. So we can say n minus 48 will be less than 12. And uh, since n is odd, n minus 48 also has to be odd. So now if we try to break this down into numbers which are less than 12 and odd, uh, n minus 48 can take three values. It, it could either be what from here or it could be three or it could be nine odd factors of this number which are less than uh, 12 will be 1, 3 and 9. So n minus 48 could be 1, n minus 48 could be 3, n minus 48 could be 9. Why are we choosing 1, 3, 9? Because n has to be less than 60, so n minus 48 has to be less than 12. n has to be odd. Odd minus 48 will be odd. So these are the three odd factors. So this will give us n is 49. And this will give us n is 51. And this will give us n is 50. Uh, 48 plus 3 is 51, 57. So these are the three solutions which are possible for n. Correspondingly, we will have solutions for m as well. Now, again, this uh, in terms of level of difficulty is a moderate question. But if you have practiced, this is definitely something or a type of question that you would have come across in, in, in while practicing. We discussed this in class or similar question in class as, as well. So yeah, moderate level of difficulty. And about uh, two and a half minutes should be uh, enough to solve this question because we know the process. The only thing is 
the last step might take time where we are trying to break down the number into its factors and assign the value. That is the only part that, that should take time. The rest of it is a mechanical process that we can simply follow. If A, B, C and D are integers and N is a prime number, which of the following is, a, is always a factor of A plus B minus C minus D raised to power N? Minus A raised to power N plus B raised to power N minus C raised to power N minus D raised to power N. And N is a prime number. Let me take N is 2. This becomes A plus B minus C minus D squared minus A squared plus B squared minus C squared minus D squared. This can be written as take this term as one term. This is the other term. So this becomes A plus B minus C plus D taking minus common whole squared. So this will be A plus B whole squared plus C plus D whole squared minus 2 A plus B into C plus D. From here I have minus A square minus B square plus C square plus D square. This becomes A square plus B square plus 2 AB plus C square plus D square plus 2 CD. Sorry. Uh, from here, product will have minus 2 AC minus 2 AD minus 2 BC minus 2 BD. And then the last four terms minus A square minus B square plus C square plus D square. A square B square cancels out. C and D is positive. Therefore, 2 C square plus 2 D square uh, plus 2 AB remains as it is. 2 C D also remains as it is. Minus 2 AC remains as it is. 2 AD remains as it is. 2 BC remains as it is. 2 BD remains as it is. From here, we can take out 2 C square plus D square. Uh, plus AB plus CD minus AC minus AD minus BC minus BD. As you can see, this is all this is divisible by 2, which was the value of uh, N to start with. Hence, I can mark N as the answer because it is true for this point, then it has to be true for others as well. The logic here is when we do the expansion of this term, every term will have an NC0, NC1, NC2, and so on. The NC0 terms will have powers of A as N, which will cancel out from here. Also, since we are looking at prime numbers, apart from two, every for every other case, these terms, A raised to power N, B raised to power N will be positive, C and D will be negative, and from here, we'll get the opposite sign. So, they will cancel out. Hence, we will always be left when we write the value of NC1, we have N factorial upon 1 factorial into N minus R factorial. So, for every term, we will have an N remaining because the NC0 terms will cancel out. And therefore, the uh, expression will always be divisible by n. Again, I'd say this is a moderate level of difficulty question. Uh, uh, since I'm taking values and solving, so I'm saying for me, the attempt time will be higher, maybe two to three and a half minutes to get this question correct in the exam. What is the sum of all those factors of 1800 whose unit digit is 5? Uh, 1800 is factorized as sum of all those numbers. Uh, 18 into 100, which is uh, 9 into 2 into 4 into 25. So from here, we get 2 cube. From here, we get 3 square. From here, we get 5 square. Now, if we, if we want the unit digit as 5, the number has to have a power of 5, and it should be odd. So using the formula for sum of uh, uh, factors, the sum of factors having... Uh, the unit digit is 5. The only power of 2 that can be used is 2 raised to power 0. For 3, any power can be used. 3 raised to power 0, 1 or 2. For 5, there has to be a 5 definitely. So power, power of 5 is 0 cannot be used. So this becomes a required sum, which is 2 raised to power 0 is 1. 9 plus 3, 12 plus 1. 13 into 25 plus 5, which is 30. And therefore, the required sum is 3, 9, 0. Again, it's an easy question. If you know the formula, the standard... Uh, standard representation of the uh, sum of roots and depending on the conditions, we just have to remove some uh, some values from the standard formula. So it's an easy question if you have if you've done the topic. Otherwise, uh, uh, again, then otherwise it might be difficult where you start to find the roots. Uh, solving time should be about one and a half to two minutes to figure out the formula and get the calculation done. 
P is a set of factors of variety such that no element of that set is a multiple of any other element. Let us first look at factors of 180. 180 is 18 into 10, which is 9 into 2, 18 into 2 into 5, 10. So 2 squared into 3 squared into 5. Uh, no element of the set is a multiple of any other element. What is the maximum number of elements in 3? So if I look at the number of factors, they are 3 into 3, 9 into 2, 18. Basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 12, 15, 18, 20, 30, 36, 45, 60, 90, and 180. Now, we want numbers such that they should not be multiples of any other element. Clearly, they will not be... Um, Composite numbers because composite numbers are multiples of prime numbers. So we look at the prime numbers simply. And the, these three numbers in that group will be such that uh, they are not multiples of any other number. If we choose any other number, it will be a multiple of 2, 3, 5. I also cannot choose 1 because 1 is a multiple uh, or every number is a multiple of 1. So 1 cannot be chosen. So basically, this question is simply finding the prime factors of 180, which is an easy process. All we have to do is factorize and look at the prime numbers that are there. If you've done factors, this is a question that should not be very difficult to solve. How many devices of 25200 uh, can be expressed in the form of 4n plus 3? So let us look at the 25200. Uh, factorize this first. So 252 into 100. 252 is 7. 7 3s are 21. 7 3s are 21, 4, 2. 36 into 100. This becomes 7 into 9 into 4 into 4 into 25. So this is 2 squared, 2 squared, 2 raised to the power 4 into 3 squared into 5 squared into 7. Now, if we are forming factors, we can see that anything multiplied by 2 will not be of the form 4n plus 2. Anything which is a multiple of 2 will either leave a remainder of 2 with 3 divided by 4 or it will be divisible by 4. So when I'm forming these factors, I will not add use 2. Also, 3 leaves is of the form 4n plus 3, where n is a whole number. 3 square is of the form 4n plus 1. Uh, 5 is of the form 4n plus 1. So is 5 square, 25. 7 is of, of the form 4n plus 3. If I combine 4n plus 3 and 4n plus 1, I'll get 4n plus 3. Combining 4n plus 1, 4n plus 1 will not give me 4n plus 3. Also, combining 4n plus 3 and 4n plus 3 will give us 3, 3 is a 9, which becomes 4n plus 1. So, if we have to write the uh, possibilities, I am starting with 3. 3 combined with 5 or 3 in itself without any other uh, 3. 3 combined with 5. 3 combined with 5 square. All these three will be uh, uh, of the form three uh, four n plus three. Then we look at seven. Seven combined with seven by itself. Seven combined with five. Seven combined with five square will be four n plus three. Seven five to thirty five and so on. Thirty five one fifty one seventy five. So, so this is done seven. 4 and plus 3. 7 can also be combined with, I have done it with 5, 5 square. 7 can also be combined with 3 square. That will also give us 4 and plus 3. Next, what we can do is, we can take 7, we can take 3 square, so 3 and 1 is 3. We can combine it with 5 or we can take 7, 3 square and combine it with 5 square. In all of these terms, there is exactly one term which leaves a remainder of 3 when divided by 4. All other terms leave a remainder of 1 when divided by 4. So overall, each of the terms will leave a remainder of 3 when divided by 4. Number of possibilities, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Option C becomes the answer. In an exam, I would say this is a difficult question for the simple reason it is very easy to miss out on a case or two. Uh, especially when you uh, reach six, seven cases, it is very easy to get you know, stop on eight or not reach nine uh, and so on. 
and therefore i am saying a difficult question but if done properly this should take about 2 to 2 and a half minutes which of the following are factors of 3 raised to the power 259 3 2 raised to the power 296 first of all let us look at uh, common factors here the difference between 296 and 259 is 260 37 now 37 into 7 will give me 200 259 37 into 8 will give me 296 so this can be written as 3 raised to power 7 to the power 37 plus 2 raised to power 8 to the power 37 a raised to power n plus b raised to power n is divisible by a plus b where n is odd the power is odd so this has to be divisible by 3 raised to power 7 plus 2 raised to power 8 which of the following are factors uh, 3 raised to power 7 will be 3 9 27 81 243 729 into 3 is 2187 and 2 raised to power 8 would be 246366. So this value comes out to 3 1 I mean 4 1 4 2 4 4 3. So clearly 2 4 4 3 is a factor of these numbers. If we divide 2, 4, 4, 3 and try to factorize it, 4, 4, 8, 9, and 13 not divisible. Checking with 3, 7, 7, 3, 0, 21, 3, 4, 7, 4, 0, 28, 6, 3, 3, 49. So 2, 4, 4, 3 is nothing but 7 into 3, 49. So 3, 49 will also be a factor of this number. Then comes 16. 16 is an even number. Odd plus even gives me an odd number. And an odd number cannot be divisible by 16. So 16 cannot be a factor of the odd number. So out of these three, the factors of the given expression at option B, 2 and 3 becomes the answer. In terms of level of difficulty, I'd say uh, probably moderate because you would have done similar questions while practicing. Because of the calculation time, uh, the attempt time might go up to 2 to 2 and a half minutes. In how many ways can 6060, 60060 be written as a product of two factors? Uh, 6, 0, 0, 6 into 10. This will be divisible by 11. So 11 into 11, 5 are 55, 5, 0. 11, 4 are 44, 5, 46 into 10. Uh, factorizing 5, 46 will give us 5, 4, 6 divided by 2 is 273. Two seventy three divided by seven, seven three is our twenty one, thirty nine three and thirteen. This becomes two into seven into three into thirty one. When I feel divisible, ten is two into five. So six zero zero six zero will be nothing but two and two. Two raised to power four uh, into three into seven into 5 into 11 into 31. So the number of factors will be 2 raised to power 2, not 4. Will be 2 plus 1, 3 into 1 plus 1, 2 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 into 1 plus 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, prime numbers to the power of 1, so 2, 5, and 3, which will be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 96 factors. Combining two factors, the first and the last, the second and the second last, if we multiply, we get the number itself. And therefore, from 96, we can have 96 by 2, that is 48 pairs. There will be 48 ways of writing 60060 as a product of two factors. Uh, option C becomes the answer. I think this is an easy question. All we have to do is count the number of factors and they were divided by two. Standard procedure and therefore, I am saying easy. Because the number is a little larger, 6006. Uh, the calculation time might go up to two minutes. The rest, I think, the doable question. How many numbers between 6,000 and 9,000? Co prime to 9,000. One way of doing this is, if we look at 6,000, 6,000 prime factors are 2, 3, and 5. Thousands because of 2 and 5, 6 because of 2 and 3. Similarly, 9,000 factors are, prime factors are 3, 2, and 5. 
we look at all the numbers which are multiples of 2, 3, 5. Uh, those numbers will not be co prime with 6000, uh, less than 6000. Similarly, we do the same process less than 9000 and then subtract. But we can directly use the Euler totient for this. So, according to the Euler totient, numbers less than 6000 and co prime with it are given by 6000 into 1 minus 1 by 2 into 1 minus 1 by 3 into 1 minus 1 by 5. So this becomes 6000 into 1 by 2 into 2 by 3 into 4 by 5. 2 to cancel, 5 3 is 15, 15 4 is 60. Therefore, 1600. So these are numbers from 1 to 6000, which are, there are 1600 numbers which are co prime with 6000. It is quite obvious that any number that is co prime with 6000 will also be co prime with 9000. So less than 6000, there are 1600 numbers which are co prime with 9000. If we look at numbers that are less than 9000 and co prime with 9000, they will be 9000 into the prime factors 1 into 1 minus 1 minus 1 by 2, 1 minus 1 by 3, 1 minus 1 by 5. This is a direct formula that can be used without exception. 1 by 2, 2 by 3, 4 by 5. Uh, 5, 3 is 15, 6, 6, 4 is 2, 4, 0, 0. So from 1 to 9,000, there are 2,400 numbers that are co-prime with 9,000. From 1 to 6,000, there are 1,600 numbers. And therefore, between 6,000 and 9,000, there will be 2,400 minus 1,600, which is 800 numbers, which are co-prime with 9,000. That becomes the answer. Because we know the formula, the question becomes an easy question. Otherwise, counting each factor would have taken a long time. Also, the attempt time falls because all we are doing is putting in the formula and getting the answer. So, one and a half minutes should be good enough to answer the question. For how many of the first 300 even? Natural numbers is the total number of factors even. Now, number of factors is even. for non-square values. Square numbers have odd number of factors. First, 300 even natural numbers start from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 up to 600. From this, we simply remove the squares. How many squares will be there? Remove squares. How many squares will be there? We'll have 2 square, uh, 4 square because we are looking at this even numbers, 6 squares and so on. And the final square will be, which is less than 600, 25 is 625. So 24 square. As you can see, 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4, 2 3 is 6. So there are 12 square values, which is less than 600, which are even. They will have odd number of factors. And there are a total of 300 numbers. So the numbers left will be 300 minus 12, which is 288 becomes my answer. Question number 9, uh, 288. Right. Again, this I think is an easy question. Basic application of... Uh, the number of factors, numbers being square and uh, otherwise. The only thing is there is chance of uh, uh, mistake happening and therefore I am saying moderate to take about two minutes to answer the question and be sure what you are doing. Otherwise, uh, and then it becomes a question that could be done in the exam. Ramu has four sons the product of their ages, which are all integers is 225. Even if the sum of their ages is known, their individual ages cannot be found. So, the Sum is such that there are two cases possible for it. What is the age of the youngest son? If you look at 225, two or more cases, 225 is 15 squared, which is 3 square, 5 square. Now we have to divide 3 square, 5 square into, uh, as a product of four numbers. So that could be 1 into 1 into 1 into 225. <laughs> Here the sum of the numbers will be 225 plus 3, 228. 1 into 1 into Take out the 3, 3 into uh, 25 into 3, 75. Here the sum will be 75, 78 and 280. 1 into 1 into uh, 5 into 45. Here the sum will be 45 to 50 and 252. 1 into 1 into uh, 9 into uh, 25. 25. 35, 36, 1 into 1 into 15 into 15, 
this will be 32 i'm just making multiple cases the sum of uh, numbers will be 32 making multiple cases as you can see for all the numbers so far the uh, sum is different so we will know the exact case that we are looking at two values were one now we keep just one value as one and give numbers to otherwise so if i give this a three we are left with one three and two fives so three into 25 this becomes 25 3 3 6 32 here we can see the number the sum is repeated uh, or we can have 1 into 3 into 5 into 15 which will be 15 20 24 we could have 1 into 5 into 5 into 9 which will be 20 we would have 5 into 3 into 5 into 3, which would be 16. As we can see, for all the cases, the sum is different. But if you look at these two cases, the sum is 32. So if I say that there are four sums, product of ages is 25, so the sum is 32. It could be either of the two cases. Hence, we will not be able to find out the individual age. If we know that the sum is a 16, we will know that the ages have to be 5353 because that is the only case possible. Hence, the, the, one of these cases is happening. What is the age of the youngest son? In both the cases, we can say that the youngest son is one year old and therefore option A becomes my answer. I will say that this question is a difficult question because uh, there is a very easy chance of missing out, missing out on cases. Even understanding of the question might be difficult and therefore uh, two and a half to three minutes easily to attempt the question. Now, if I look at the overall uh, level of difficulty of the test, as, as, as I said, moderate to difficult level, five to six questions net net correct in about 20 to 23, 24 minutes would be a very good attempt, 95 plus percent time. Which are these questions that I would have chosen if I had to choose my six questions, they would be uh, out of these questions that are mentioned, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Which are which are these questions? Again, I'm not counting this as a, this is this as an attempt question because uh, you know there can be multiple constraints here in the second part of the question, and not every constraint might be equally easy. So I'm not counting this. This again uh, worked with uh, putting two might not always work. Definitely counting the standard formula. Definitely counting this. Just counting the prime numbers. Uh, this question again can miss out on cases. Uh, this question again uh, could miss out on cases though. It's a repeat sort of a question. But from here I'm doing questions. Definitely doing this. Uh, straightforward counting of factors. Doing this as well. Just the Euler quotient is to be applied. Uh, doing this as well. Counting numbers which have even uh, factors. Even factors. And then comes this question. Now this question is a difficult question. But in the exam you can work with, uh, with options. Because... Since the product is 225, the youngest son cannot be 2 years old. So the product will not be odd. If the youngest son is 3, the other son has to be at least 3. And therefore, the remaining have to be 5 and 5. Only one case is possible. So all this also could not be the answer. And therefore, what I'm saying is the only possibility was 1. So because of the options, I might have looked at attempting this question in the exam. And therefore, my attempt uh, to get my 5-6 questions would be out of 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10 for sure.